Hello everyone, Emma Power here, and welcome back to a brand new video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at Reggie Drago, which is said to be an amazing dragon type from Silver Tempest. So just looking at some card translations over here, Reggie Drago V-Star is a brand new dragon type V-Star Pokemon with 280 HP, so it's up there with tanks like Arceus and Giratina. It also has no weakness or resistance, making it very formidable. No resistance is obviously like if something that all dragon Pokemon do seem to have. But no weakness is a major thing in this game because 1 hit KOs are so crucial. Having a retreat cost of 3 means that cards like Air Balloon will not be usable really, so you'll have to rely on Switch and Air Balloon. But aside from that, those are the only real negatives because Regidrago is an amazing card. Apex Dragon says choose an attack from a Dragon Pokemon in your discard pile and use it as this attack. And thanks to the amount of Dragon Pokemon we do have in Standard, there is plenty of options and this could be a really cool deck to build around. Needing two grass and a fire is fairly awkward, but at least we have Gordinia to help accelerate some energies. Then the ability for V Star Power is Legacy Star that says during your turn, you may discard the top seven cards of your deck, then put up two cards from your discard pile into your hand. Note this does say then put up to two cards. So you don't actually have to choose two cards from the top seven that you discard. You can take two cards that are previously in your discard pile i.e. supporters, energy, even Pokemon that you want to recover, or maybe to recover items, since there are very few ways to actually recover items in the game. So very very powerful ability that will allow you to mill out other Dragon Pokemon as well, so very strong. Serena is a new supporter card that's very good as well, has two different effects that you can choose from, discard up to three cards from your hand, if you discarded any cards in this way, draw cards until you have five in your hand, so, very powerful effect because it will allow you to discard other Dragon Pokemon that you can copy with Apex Dragon. And then the second effect is switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon V with, your active po with their active Pokemon. So, Serena can essentially act as a way to either discard multiple Dragon Pokemon, or as a way to pull up a Pokemon and KO it using Apex Dragon. So, just looking at some other translations here. Regidrago V, 220 hit points, very strong for an evolving V. Retreat cost of 3 is still very annoying, so no air balloon synergy even on the evolving V. It has two fairly powerful attacks. Sky Scream says discard 3 cards from the top of your deck and attach all energy cards in, in this way to this Pokemon. So fairly good because we want to be accelerating 2 grass and a fire in order to use you know any attack with Apex Dragon on the following turn. Also just a nice way to mount some Dragon Pokemon. Unfortunately, going second, attacking with an evolving V Pokemon is never ideal, especially when cards like Palkia and Zorak can threaten one at KOs. So you probably end up switching into something like a Mew, a Jirachi, or even a Tapu Koko with free retreat. That'll probably be a better option than using Skyscream, but it is still here. Dragon Laser also does 130 and then a 30 snipe. So if you're not playing the Guard Trump that does a big sniping move, then Dragon Laser, Dragon Laser can be copied with another Regi Drago in order to have some sniping damage. Then the new Dragonite is an amazing card that will essentially be your way of accelerating energy beyond the first Gardenia. One of the great perks about this deck is that you actually don't need to use Gardenia post the first Regidrago because you can rely on Dragonite's Energy Hurricane attack. It does 180 damage and you can search your deck for up to 3 basic energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon any way you like. And because Apex Dragon is for 2 Grass and a Fire, we don't need to worry about playing any Water, Lightning or Double Colorless Energy. So going into the first list over here, this is a Arceus build of the deck. So we're not even really focusing on Gardenia as such. We don't even have a copy of Dragonite in this one. This is purely focusing on using Arceus to do 200 damage and then accelerate a bunch of energies to our upcoming Regidragos. Then beyond that, we can use Apex Dragon to copy attackers like Gudra, Giratina, or Draladon, or Garchomp. So Gudra is an amazing attacker in this deck. I'm surprised they're not running more than one copy. But 200 damage and you take 80 less essentially gives you a free matchup against a lot of one prize decks. Giratina does 280 and just allows you to take a free 1 hit KO on basically any Pokemon at the price of sending 2 energy from any of your Pokemon to the Lost Zone. And then Draladon does 220 but is a wall breaker so can go through stuff like Miltank. Then Garchomp does 220 for 4. But it does it to any Pokemon, and you have to discard some energy. So, Gotcha V, you won't be using all the time, but it is a nice way to spread damage. Then, note the Appleton, the hot cross bun dinosaur, as I like to call it. 
a very cool stage one Pokemon. I think we'll find a lot of people's radars, but it's super strong. It does 70 damage for each ability for each special energy card, sorry, attached to your opponent's Pokemon in play. So stuff like Lugia that naturally will only have special energy in play, two to four copies potentially if it's trying to attack. So you can actually get a free one at kill on Lugia using copying Appleton essentially with Apex Dragon. So very cool tech card to see, and we'll definitely likely see a lot of play in the future. One Crobat V, one Luminion as your kind of backup draw support, because Bibarel is not the best, although we can rely on Starbirth from Arceus to get going in the early game. We also play a Radiant Gardevoir just to take a bit less damage, and this coincides very nicely with Guja as well. Because you play a limited count of energies, both Fire and Grass, you don't really want to play a Greninja to discard too many energies, and we only play one Ordinary Rod as well. Because we're not playing any special energy ourselves, something interesting to note is that this list does actually play a Temple of Sinnoh. I would track that comment because it's actually playing three copies of Double Turbo, my bad. Still, one Temple of Sinnoh just to help control Lugia a bit more is very ideal. So, cool list overall, and should be one of the more competitive versions of Ready Drago. Next, we have a solely focusing build on Ready Drago, so we've got no Arceus, no Big Barrel kind of shenanigans, just the Ready Drago and the Dragon Pokemon. However, in order to accelerate energy, we are playing the Leafeon V, which I think is a massively important card in this deck, and it's very crucial in accelerating energy in the early game. Essentially, Leafeon V will allow you to search your deck for grass energy, attach it to a Regi Drago, and then end your turn, allowing you to use Apex Dragon to copy Dragonite as early as turn 2, so you can start using the 180 to accelerate 3 energy. The deck also gives you access to a Wallbreaker in the form of Drelladon, Gudra that will allow you to do 200 and take 80 less, and then Giratina for those 1 Akeos. Again, also playing the Radiant God of War to give you more tanking abilities in the mirror and other matchups. So a very important card, and I will be surprised if more and more people don't play God of War in the end, basically, because I think it's a very important card. Something else to note, there is actually some cards in here that I haven't translated. The Aroma Incense, next to Evolution Incense, says flip a coin, if heads, search your deck for a base Pokemon, put it into your hand. If tails, you search your deck for an Evolution Pokemon. So in short, a very strong card, because on a heads, it will find you your Regidrago Vs, your Leafeon Vs, and your God of Wars, which you don't mind finding. But on a tails, it will find all your Evolution Pokemon that you will need throughout the game. It's a very strong card. Again, we are playing three copies of Temple of Sinnoh, because... It's just a nice way of denying Lugia some special energy. Lugia can destroy stadiums, but Lugia can also just not attack if it has four special energy on, and they have and you have the Temple of Sinnoh in play, so they have to bump your stadium in order to get the first attack off. So yeah, very cool to see, and this is kind of like the list that I expect a lot of people will lean into when they're trying to build this deck. So I originally wasn't going to include this list because I'm not actually a fan of covering these like blurred images anymore but essentially this ready drago v star list is just so cool and unique i thought it was worth including so it actually features three copies of amazing rare jirachi and the radiant venusaur a combo i just would not have imagined because frankly it's fairly underwhelming and i'm sure a lot of people out there would agree however this person deemed it worthy amazing rare jirachi allows you to look at the top two cards of your deck put one of them into your hand and put the other one back and then Radiant Venusaur, at the end of your turn, allows you to drop to a 4 if you have 0 cards in your hand. Because of how aggro and draw heavy this deck is, you probably expect to burn through your hand most, most turns in the game. So having Radiant Venusaur is very cool in that regard. It's also a lovely partner for Serena, as Serena will be discarding multiple Dragon Pokemon. And because you play high counts of Ultra Ball, Quick Ball and Trekking Shoes, being able to use Radiant Venusaur after this would be very important. So very cool combo, very cool to see. Also noting the fact this list does play two Gudra and two Dragonite, so you can definitely tell that they don't really care about breaking through walls with Draladon, even though I would say Draladon is worth it as a one-of. Playing two Gudra and two Dragonite makes the most sense to me. Also looking at the supporters, it's very strange. Four Gardenia, three Serena, and two Boss. So no research or Marnie whatsoever, just focusing solely on these new supporters. Or I should say the new supporter Serena, then four Gardenia, two bosses orders. So super interesting array of supporters. Also looking at the stadiums, it's a bit strange. We have two Stormy Mountain. That will allow you to search your deck for basic dragon Pokemon, put them onto your bench, purely for setting up multiple Regidrago Vs. And then the new Primordial Altar Stadium. 
will allow you to once in your turn look at the top card of your deck and then you may discard it. Meaning if it's a dragon Pokemon or it's just a spell Jirachi that you don't need, you can get rid of it. A very interesting list and I'd be interested to see how this one plays out in the future. So yet another slightly blurry list, but this was, the on this was the only image I could find for this very list. And it's essentially playing three copies of Pokestop in order to discard multiple dragon Pokemon. Also playing a bit of a wacky support account, four Gardenia, two Serena, one Marnie. Not sure I fully agree with this decision, but it's super cool to see either way. Two copies of Mew and one copy of Radiant Zard. Very few of these Reggie Drago lists actually seem to play the Radiant Zard, but I think it is, you know, it's a very versatile low utility your low utility attacker, I should say. Because it means you can play a lot less Farangy than Grass. And essentially you don't have to rely on copying Dragonite's attack in order to get a massive one at kill in the late game. Because if you're having to use Dragonite, then you're putting all your energy in play and you're only ever getting two at kills. You don't really have a one at kill move besides Giratina, and that will send energy to the Lost Zone. So having Radiant Zard is a very nice option in the late game to get a huge one at kill. So super excited to see how this one plays out. I'm not sure I'm a massive fan of it. Is playing the one Geladon, know that in the top right corner. But yeah, should be interesting. I think I prefer this list overall. But the Mew Radiant Zard package and Pokestop is certainly interesting to see. So next up we have a Lost Zone variant. I included this one mainly because I've seen a lot of people say that Reggie Drago's attack cost is too awkward even for Gardenia to meet, so they would love to play stuff like Mirage Gate and work it into a Lost Zone box. So if you're a fan of a Lost Zone engine, I'm personally a little bit tired of it because I played so much of it during the first few weeks of the set, but if you're if you are interested in Lost Zone and you want to try out something new, this would certainly be the deck list for you. It obviously relies on the Comfrey engine, sending cards into the Lost Zone until you reach 7. At that point you can use Mirage Gate. Something cool to note about this deck, however, is that because you're running the one Cramorant, you can actually hit through stuff like Sableye. Um, not Sableye, I should say, Miltank, which walls out the Pokemon. So you do have Drelodon for that, but also having Cramorant is just nice for prize trades, so I do like that li this list in that regard. Also playing the Guja means you can wall out other one prizers that would otherwise do a lot of damage to you. So very cool list, I'm just not sure if it's really for me. I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with that, but you know personal taste or whatever, so also because you're playing Grass and Fire Energy, you can't really afford to play Psychic Energy as well, so sadly no Sableye, which is one of the main selling points I feel for the Lost Zone decks. So looking at this last list here, it's just playing a more or less straight Reggie Drago deck like we've seen previously, the Roma Incense, the Serena, it's all here, except there is some different stuff. There is a Dialga that is 80 damage, and then you take no then it takes no damage from Pokemon V during an next turn, I believe. So, very strong effect. To be honest, it is only doing 80 damage though, so your opponent can just try and escape or around it. But still, very interesting attack to see. And yeah, it seems pretty cool. Honestly, three battle VIP pass as well as inspiring because you're not playing any quick pull. So, yeah, it's an interesting list. I don't have a whole lot to say about this one other than the fact that because you're playing three Pokestop, one Greninja, you're fairly, you're fairly like very heavy on the draw. But this is probably like one of the more consistent ways, or at least turbo builds, of playing Reggie Drago. So thanks for watching. This has been Ember Power. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think down below, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.